Throughout the years, I've taken a look at a few different shotgun pistols. In fact, the Shell Strike was one of my most anticipated blasters of 2020, and it turned out to be a pretty okay fun little toy. But I want the ultimate Nerf shotgun pistol, something of almost perfection that will carry me through the battlefields that I could easily use either as a primary blaster or a competent secondary. And well, I think I finally have it because the breaking wind from Sea Yard Nerf is an absolute monster. That was four darts. That was really impressive. That is super fun and practical to use. And also one of the most ingenious designs I have seen in a long time. Roll the intro. No, seriously, I foresee a lot of the things from the Breaking Wind being adapted into a bunch of different blasters. The main point I really want to talk about on this thing is how do you think this whole front end swings open? Do you think that's like a spring-loaded piece or something like that that you would expect in a blaster like this? But then again, there's not a whole lot of room up here for springs. I wouldn't think of how you could put a spring in that. And it turns out the boys at Sea Yard Nerf did something a little bit better than you would ever expect. Flipping magnets. How do they work? As you can kind of see in there, there's magnets located both on the little breech piece and the chamber itself. And they're in a reverse polarity. So there's just a latch right here that opens up when you pull the trigger back a certain distance and then the magnets just freely spring that out and it's never going to get tired and it works absolutely that's 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 so smart i i don't know why i haven't seen more of this kind of thing before now but i have a feeling after the fact i'm going to see a lot of different little tricks that can be done with simple magnets another pretty ingenious part about this blaster the breach itself let's take this buckshot shell so this is going to be three rival rounds just kind of put that in there and close it prime it back it is essentially a shell fed jolt but it's way cooler than that fire the shell nothing happened but if i pull the trigger back a little bit more it ejects out the spent shell and you can easily load in a new one and that is a really impressive feature for this blaster basically that little hinge mechanism meshes up with the trigger so if you pull the trigger back just enough where it feels natural you will release the catch and fire the blaster if you pull it back a little bit more you hear that click and you engage that catch which opens up the breach and allows you to very easily insert a new shell fire it and eject the spent shell. There is no actual ejector inside this to keep it really simple. That being said, I guess it's this little notch that's cut in or something. I have no idea, but the actual ejection mechanism works flawlessly. Even if you have the blaster pretty much level, you open it, most of the time the shell will almost always come out. If you have it you know, pointed down, it still flings it out a considerable amount. Just magnets and good design it's incredible how good this blaster is for what it actually is supposed to be all right well i will comment on the fact that this thing is uh, not the prettiest girl on the block that's for sure it's no fat no nothing no chonk no really a whole lot of just simplistic print design and everything like that you can buy the files off cr nerds etsy i will have a link down in the description below but you can also in the near future pick up a hardware kit and a fully assembled blaster from them as well i believe the prices on that are going to fluctuate I, I think they were looking at like 35 dollars, which would include the file set and a hardware kit and then of course there will be more expensive diy fully printed kits and everything like that and then of course a fully assembled blaster from them which will obviously cost the most that makes this blaster one of the most practical shotgun blasters in the entire hobby and when you account for the fact that it really isn't that big of a blaster to have on your gear here's a hammer shot for scale and yes i will be doing a review of this whole color scheme here and the two other ones that you can get and it's i mean obviously the hammer shot is longer but then again so is the grip on the breaking wind and yes, that is a flatulence joke. Not half bad. I mean, all things considered, it's shorter and easier to holster than a hammer shot. And speaking of which, you can't actually pick up a holster 
for your braking wind. It has two different things. You can get either a Molly adapter or a belt loop adapter, set that on your gear, and you've got a blaster in your pocket that will pretty much fire everything. The question is, of course, how good is it at firing all those things? And I guess the other question is, have you subscribed yet? Because we got a lot more videos coming. So make sure you hit that button, hit the like button, and then hit the notification button so you don't miss a single one of them. To the range! All right, it's pouring down rain. Thankfully, I got my lovely wife holding an umbrella for me. I thank her profusely for that. We're gonna go with a pocket full of shells. This time it's going to be two rifle rounds. See what kind of distance and spread we get out of that. And that was fairly competent. Not much of a spread, but still pretty darn good. Oh, that never gets boring. Up next, the triple Boomco shell. See how this goes. Typically it's the best one. See how the breaking wind handles it. And about the same as two rival rounds, almost elite range. Not bad, could do a better spread, but that's typically reduced to, you know, if the darts are good or not, which those are not fresh darts at this point. Next contender, a mega dart shell. I'm really curious to see how this one does. And it went almost rival range. I'll little bit under that, but definitely usable in a war. Triple rival shell. Oh, that got better range than the two. Okay, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. That was awesome. This is a quad short dart shell. I'm not even sure how well this will work. Let's find out together. remarkably good I gave it a little bit of an angle but that was really impressive this time we're going with just two short darts see how well this performs and about the same although it has a good spread which is still very usable and a single elite dart or in this case an adventure force waffle yeah, that's about what I expect. It's about elite ranges. Another one of those singled elite darts, or in this case, Adventure Force Waffle. Wow, that really had a suction on it. We got ourselves a sniper pistol, apparently. That was incredibly good with a slight angle on it. Now, I say sniper pistol, but this is really what you want to use if you're going to do any kind of snipering. Because this barrel right here works just like any other shell, except for it converts your breaking win into a breech loading pistol. One of the most effective ones I've ever gotten my hands on. So we just load a dart into the back there, prime it before we close it because this breech actually has an immaculate seal and contact, that dart's gone. It just cleared the property. Uh, this thing hits 160, 170 FPS and it is incredibly, quick to use. This is one of the fastest loading pistols I've ever got my hands on. It is, it is amazing. This is the setup right here that, that will make this thing a fan favorite. Ooh, I didn't, I did it in the wrong order of operations, but it's still primed. Oh, that is so good. Doesn't even need a scar barrel or anything. It's just at that sweet spot and it works flawlessly. So you could fire all of that ammo out of it and actually snipe somebody if you are still under the FPS cap of your local war and switch for no, no issue whatsoever. It's it's perfect, it's, it's the perfect blaster. I can't be any more excited. So yeah, basically anything that fits inside a Spring Thunder shell will fit inside of the Breaking Wind. There is also a Ultra shell and probably some other ones that I don't have on hand right now, but the concept still applies. If there's a Spring Thunder shell for it, it will work perfectly fine in your Breaking Wind. But I think the most important setup, of course, is this little barrel right here. And we'll talk a little bit more about this towards the end, but this thing is what I think really makes this blaster shine. I was not expecting to like this half as much as I thought, but one of the blasters I've really wanted is a breech loading pistol. And I've gotten it a couple of times now, but not quite in my favorite setup. As you probably saw from the range footage, this thing is awesome. It works so freaking well as a little breech loading 
sniper pistol because you do get to basically avoid one of the priming steps on this thing, which just makes it a monster when it comes to reliability, rate of fire, and distance. The best part about that is this is actually not the optimal length for this blaster. They did say that they used a 12 inch long piece of brass, so basically a full piece of 17 30 seconds brass, and it hit upwards of 180 FPS, which out of this volume of a plunger tube, I can actually believe this thing is a monster. You've got all the compatibility to use all the shells competently. It hits a little bit harder than the foam in nature, but I think that's just because it's a more efficient setup. It doesn't have the two shells inside of it or a selector switch. And of course it doesn't have the cool factor of being a double barreled shell ejecting shotgun, but it's still really good. And the seal on this thing is just dumb good. I don't know how they got a breach to seal that well with a shell, but color me impressed. Sea Yard Nerf, you have You've outdone yourselves. I, I really don't see a person that wouldn't need a blaster like this because it is the Swiss army knife of this hobby at this point. It shoots everything. I do say everything you might be saying, well, what about demolisher rockets? Clearly there's a demolisher rocket add on for it, right? And that was one of the first things I brought up to Sea Yard Nerf. And that's where this video does get a little bit more feedbacky and a little bit more, you need to let them know down in the comment section that they need to do this. But I think that this barrel, while cool, and while you can get a longer version, which they should probably also sell, I think the most important thing they need to do is make this outer diameter the same diameter as a demolisher rocket. It is very close right now, but if you were to slim down this outer diameter of this sleeve right here, which is basically cosmetic, it's just kind of protecting the brass, you'd be able to easily fit a demolisher rocket on the end of this barrel, which means your blaster would then also be able to fire demolisher rockets, which is pretty much the last ammo type you wouldn't normally be able to fire out of something like this. And it should be able to work inside of blasters like the Foam of Nature as well, because as long as it's not a magazine, it's just a breach where the barrel can fit in, it would work perfectly. And that would turn this blaster into the ultimate HVZ tool. HVZ or humans versus zombies likes to mix things up a little bit, destroy you away from just using your rival and your elite darts. Typically to diversify people blaster and ammo choices, they put out special zombies that can only be stunned by specific ammo types, namely Mega and then Demolisher Rocket. If you don't have one of those blasters, you're pretty much screwed, but having something like this on your gear would make you the hero of your squad because you would be able to shoot absolutely anything and you'd be able to do it competently in a small form factor. So my idea for them going forward, and they told me they could probably get out a complete build of the blaster and everything, for around $120, but that might change. I don't know, you'd have to pay attention in the comment section if they decide to do this, but I believe that they should be able to have the holster on one side and on the tactical rail on top, which there is two of them, the shorter one, I'm not exactly sure what you'd use it for besides maybe a flashlight, but the top one, well, there's really nothing on there right now and I don't think you'd use a sight, but if you could make a little three shell caddy on the side, basically something like that. And then also be able to hold maybe two shells up on the top of the blaster or one of the barrels that would let you shoot demolisher rockets. And that would make a complete HVZ setup. You could have every single ammo type ready to go on one blaster on your gear. So yeah, obviously love this thing. I love links down below to everything you can pick up. Right now they don't have completed blasters or hardware kits up but they will have them soon. And I can highly recommend if you already have a hardware store nearby and a 3D printer to purchase the files and print one of these out yourself because it's also not even that difficult of a print. Thank you, CR Nerf, for handing one of these things off to me. I I couldn't be happier. I'm Walcom S7. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you watched all the way to the end, I really thank you for that. Make sure you hit like. Make sure you get subscribed if you aren't already. We have some really cool stuff coming in the near future. I do really want to apologize for the lack of videos. It's just been crazy on, I guess, my allergies or something like that. I, I can't breathe very much at all, but I switched medication. I'm hoping that will help. Stay tuned because I think you know what's coming next. It's about time we gave this blaster its time to shine. I can't wait to show off this magpie. This is you gotta up, up, up.